Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba and the deep dive. In this video, we're gonna break down what you should do should the worst happen. So you're on a nice dive, you've been looking at some colorful fish, you suddenly remember to check your gauges and you're in the red. Now your training covers when you're completely out of gas and sort of what you should do, which we'll cover in this as well. Uh, but first we're gonna talk about what you should do when you're just very low on gas, but not out completely. So there are a couple of ways that this can happen. The usual culprits are not checking your gauges often enough, not noticing a short air fill at the beginning of the dive, uh, and literally just starting the dive with less gas than everybody else, uh, or it can happen from equipment malfunction as well, which ranges from a small continuous leak or a catastrophic fail. Now, a lot of things need to go wrong all at the same time for you to actually run out of air underwater, but it is good to know what to do in the worst case scenario. So let's think about it and what you should do if you find yourself in a low or out of air situation underwater. If you're in the red zone of your SPG, then your dive is over, full stop. Now, in the first few moments, you need to decide your next course of action to make sure that you get out of the water as safe as possible. Now, don't panic. Remember your training, what your dive instructor taught you to do, and take a moment to look around and think things through. The safest way to get out of the water is to get as close to as many other scuba divers as possible. There's a reason why we teach you all to dive in buddy pairs, and that's because your buddy is a big mobile spare air supply for you, and the more people that you have around you, the more air you all have to share. Now, don't be shy about your problem and keep it secret until the last possible moment. Tell your buddy exactly how much gas you have left and then they can prepare themselves as well. It's important that you put pride aside and simply just sort out the situation in front of you. So let's take a closer look at the first scenario. This is your best case scenario. If you've been on a shallow dive, so NDL shouldn't be an issue, you've suddenly looked at your gauges and you still have a bit of gas left, then you probably have a surprising amount of time left underwater, to be honest. Because you're nice and shallow, the amount of gas that you breathe in with every single breath is a lot less than what you naturally breathe down deep and because you've been on a shallow dive chances are that you've been nowhere near your no decompression limits and you can probably just amble your way up to the surface at a safe rate. So check your dive computer, see what your situation is and get your buddy's attention. Tell them that you're very low on gas and that you need to ascend. If you can, try and send up a DSMB and do the longest safety stop that you can together with your buddy, breathing from their alternate air source if you need to. If you are all by yourself, then do the same. Try and send up a DSMB and get to three meters to do the longest safety stop that you can with the air that you have left in your tank. Just remember that you do need to inflate your BCD on the surface so you can stay buoyant. So try and leave a little bit of gas in your tank to get you on the surface and that way you can orally inflate your BCD as well if you suddenly run out of gas. Remember you can always drop your weights as well to stay on the surface so locate that mechanism whether it's in a weight belt or a quick release mechanism built into your BCD. You want to get an SMB on the surface if you can so that boat users can see exactly where you are and get ready to come and collect you. And the last thing that you want is to head straight to the surface only to be hit by a boat that didn't see you. So if you have the time, send up a surface marker boy. If you're fairly deep down and you still have some gas left, then your best chance is to use that gas to get to your buddy or to another scuba diver. You don't need to be picky, just get to someone else with some back gas that you can share on your way up to the surface. All around the world, scuba diver training is pretty universal. So nobody is gonna turn you away or look at you kind of quizzically. They're all gonna help you out. 
Now the red zone on your pressure gauge is that size. So just because it should give two people enough time to do a normal safety stop breathing from a single tank. So even if your buddy is fairly low on gas themselves, there should be enough gas for two divers to do a single safety stop. Just keep calm, keep your breathing rate as low as possible and you should be fine. Chances are, if you've been fairly deep, then you should head straight to the surface. You need to take as long as possible getting to the surface so that you can safely get all of the nitrogen out of your tissues. And the safest way to do that is with the most gas supply that you can find. So if you can, make it to another diver so that you can do a proper safety stop. Heading up all by yourself is kind of risky, and if your buddy doesn't know that you've headed up without them, they may waste time looking for you underwater and put themselves at risk because they don't know where you are. If you're nice and shallow and you try to take a breath from your regulator but nothing comes out of it, you need to make a snap decision. The best thing to do is to get to your buddy if you can, but if they're too far away or they're deeper down, then the surface might be your best choice. Remember that your priority is now to float. So you're basically going to do a Caesar, swim straight up with your regulator in your mouth and find your inflator for your BCD and your weight belt. Then when you reach the surface, you need to orally inflate your BCD so that you can float and you need to drop your weights if you need to. If you missed a safety stop, then your computer will soon tell you. If your computer is complaining, then when you get back to the boat or back to shore, you need to ask for some oxygen as soon as possible. This shouldn't really happen though, completely running out of gas that is all of a sudden. When you start to get really low on gas, you can actually feel it in your regulators. They don't have the same amount of oomph delivering gas into your mouth when you ask for it. Even if there's a mechanical fault inside your regulators, most of them today are downstream. So if something breaks, they actually give you more gas than just no gas at all. You'd have to be very distracted to not notice that you're very low on gas. It would be very unusual to just one moment not be able to breathe. Regulators just aren't built that way. The absolute worst case scenario is when you've been on a deep dive and you're still fairly deep, you take a breath of air and nothing comes out. Again, your best action is to get to another scuba diver so that you can ascend slowly together and do any stops that you might need to. If you can't get to your buddy, Caesar. Swim up steadily with your legs, exhaling all the way up and find your inflator along with the buckle of your weights. It's best to find them early so you're ready to ditch your lead if you need to and orally inflate your BCD as soon as you hit the surface because you won't be able to push that button to inflate. When you reach the surface, you'll need help as soon as possible. So get someone's attention so that they can get you out of the water and into a hyperbaric chamber. You'll want oxygen as soon as possible as well. Even if you feel kind of okay, it's better to err on the side of caution and never hide any of these situations. We're not going to put you in scuba prison or anything, but it's important for us to know if you've had a rapid ascent or missed any stops so that we can keep an eye on you and give you any relevant treatment that you may need. If we give you oxygen and you're perfectly fine, we don't mind. That's actually better for your body but hiding something and then a few hours later down the road suddenly saying that you feel a little bit weird it's almost a little bit too late so it's better to tell someone as soon as possible but the best way to make sure that you get back to the surface safely in any case is to simply check your gauges more often and actually read them properly just like a petrol gauge in a car if the needle sticks and you're not paying attention, you may think that you actually have more air than you actually do. So it's best to check your gauges really often. That way, if it hasn't changed and the needle hasn't moved, you're aware of it. Another way to avoid it is to get an air integrated dive computer, something with a wireless air transmitter so that you can set a low pressure alarm to literally alert you when you start to get low on gas. That way, your dive computer always has an eye on your tank pressure, and when it drops below a certain point, 
it'll tell you. But again, you are the one that needs to check it and check that it actually changes. If you check the reading on your computer and it hasn't changed, the number hasn't changed in the past 10 minutes since you last checked your gauges, that's a red flag. You either haven't been breathing for 10 minutes, which is amazing, or more likely your dive computer's frozen. So whatever gas management system you're using, it's up to you to check it often and actually read what it says. But hopefully none of you will ever need to do any of this. In all of my years of diving, I've only ever run out of air once underwater, and that was in a controlled environment. I was trying to do it to see what it actually feels like, and you can feel it coming a long way off. Even with a completely severed hose, it takes quite a long time to actually empty a full tank, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just be aware of what you need to do. And the best way to make sure that it never happens to you is to maintain your equipment, be careful in the water, and check your gauges. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever had an out of air situation before underwater and how it happens and how it's changed your diving. If you've modified how often you check your gauges or what you do, let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.